This news, uh, more news about the school shooting, more surprising news today coming out about the school shooting in Florida, uh, in, Par in Parkland, Florida. Uh, so yesterday we came on the air and we told you about how there, uh, there was this new news that there was an armed police officer on duty, a school officer, an armed school officer on duty, who was supposed to engage a school shooter if there was a school shooting, but that officer never went in the building where the shooting was, and that officer stood outside the building for four minutes of the shooting and never went in. So we knew that yesterday, but today we got some new news. Police well, officer, well, I'll make sure you can hear me. The new news is that not just that officer, but three other officers. So the first four armed officers to show up were from Broward County, Broward County Sheriff's deputies. None of those four officers ever went in the building. This is according to CNN. CNN broke the story tonight. None of the four first officers, armed officers to get there, ever went in the building to confront the shooter. And this is an amazing story, and I'm going to read you the story that uh, CNN posted tonight, which was um, which was that... Coral Springs police showed up. That's a, that's that, that's a nearby uh, town. Uh, they showed up after the Broward officers were, were already there, and they were stunned to see that none of the Broward office officers had gone inside. And then, even when the Coral Springs officers went inside the building, uh, none of the original four officers who were first there went inside the building with them. So it's a pretty incredible story. I'm going to read you the story right now, but it's pretty amazing, pretty stunning. Uh, seems like something stunning comes out new every day. So uh, let's get into this story right now. Thank you for our, uh, I'm going to give you the details. Thank you for to our moderators, Jan and JC. And uh, uh, who else is there in the chat room? Jan and JC, I see moderating. And Common Sense and Gleno on the website. And thank you all for joining us. And if you I'm going to get to your comments soon. So if you have comments on the story, give me a shout on Twitter, at Lookner, at L-O-O-K-N-E-R. And uh, let me just remind you, if you know anyone who watches Right Side Broadcasting, because I know a lot of people out there watch, uh, please let them know we're on the air live now because stupid, dumb YouTube, uh, we, we showed the CPAC speech this morning. They never told our, our, our subscribers that we were showing CPAC. So a bunch of people wrote to us and said, hey, I didn't even know you were covering the speech. We never got a notification. Uh, this broadcast, we never got, they never sent out a notification. So a lot of people would be watching right now, but they don't even know we're on the air live. Uh, so if you uh, know anybody, give them a shout. And also feel free, you can always tweet to at YouTube and at, U at Team YouTube, at YouTube and at Team YouTube, and tell them you want your notifications for Right Side, you signed up, why can't they fix it? We've been complaining about this for a year, by the way, just so you know. It's, it's a year that they haven't been doing this. A year. They can't fix it. I'm sure it has nothing to do at all with the particular network we are. I'm sure it has nothing to do with that. All right, let's get into the story here. Here we go. So this is from CNN. Now, Jake Tapper has a byline on this. I'll give credit to Jake Tapper, although did he really write this story? If he's an anchor, is he sitting at home writing this story? They say he has a byline, so... Uh, for now, I'll give him credit until I find out otherwise. But I'm giving CNN, I'm giving CNN credit for the story. Um, but uh, let me show you. Coral Springs police upset at some Broward deputies for not entering school. So let me read you the details here. When Coral Springs police officers... So let me, let me set the scene here by showing you a little map here. So there's Parkland, Florida. You can see, so Parkland, Florida is in the red there, and Coral Springs is just south of it. So I'm guessing what the deal is, is Parkland maybe doesn't have its own police force, and it uses the Broward County Police, but Coral Springs has its own police force. So what happened is, um, yeah, I don't, I, let me see if there's a Parkland Police. I haven't heard that there is. Parkland police. Parkland, Florida, police. 
Yeah, you get Broward County, County Sheriff Department. So Broward County Sheriff's Office is the one who's the police force for uh, Parkland. But Coral Springs is just south of Parkland, which is in the red area there. So it's the next town over. There you go. Now you can see where it says Parkland. Hold on. There you go. So there's Parkland and Coral Springs. So that's in Florida. So the first people to show up at the school... Well, there was already an armed officer at the school who was working at the school. Uh, and so some other... Par some other uh, Broward County officers were the first ones to show up at the school. So here's the story. When Coral Springs police officers arrived at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, on February 14th in the midst of the school shooting crisis, many officers were surprised to find not only that Broward County Sheriff's Deputy Scott Peterson, the armed school resource officer, had not entered the building, but that three other Broward County Sheriff's deputies were also outside the school and had not entered. So they didn't just find Scott Peterson, that one school resource officer, outside the building. They found him and three other Broward County Sheriff's Depart uh, officers sitting, uh, standing, or standing outside the building, not entering the building. Uh, Coral Springs sources told CNN this, by the way. Um, the deputies had their pistols drawn and were behind their vehicles, the sources said, and not one of them had gone into the school. With direction from the Broward deputies who were outside, Coral Springs police soon entered the building where the shooter was. New Broward County Sheriff's deputies arrived on the scene, and two of the new deputies and an officer from Sunrise, Florida, joined the Coral Springs police as they went into the building. So again, Coral Springs police show up after Broward police have already shown up. The Coral Springs police show up, and they're surprised to see four armed Broward officers outside the building. They've never, they haven't gone in. So then the Coral Springs officers went in, apparently the first officers to go into the building, along with two newly shown up Broward County deputies and an officer from Sunrise, Florida. So the original four didn't go into the building, even with the Coral Springs officers. Some Coral Springs police were stunned and upset that the four original Broward County Sheriff's deputies, who were the first on the scene did not appear to join them as they entered the school. Coral Springs sources tell CNN, it's unclear whether the shooter was still in the building when they arrived, so we don't know that. Now, you might say, well, Coral Springs sources are telling uh, CNN this, aren't they maybe biased? One thing I'll say is this, we know there's security footage of the building and of Scott Peterson deputies sitting uh, sit, uh, outside the building because the, the, the Broward Sheriff told us that yesterday. So I'm guessing, and remember there was helicopter footage of the building going on. Uh, it would seem that if, if Coral Springs police was lying about this, uh, it, it, it might be very uh, easy for them to be caught in a lie because there is surveillance footage and helicopter footage. So I'm going to I'm going to assume this is a pretty reliable story, even though it's coming from the Coral Springs police. We'll see a motivation why the Corals, later in the story, we'll see a motivation why the Coral Springs police might have told CNN this information. But uh, it, sounds, it sounds reliable to me. I mean, I wasn't there, so I can't be 100% positive, but it sounds reliable to me. Um, now, let me continue here. What the Coral Springs officers observed though not their feelings about it, will be released in a report likely next week. Sources caution that tapes are currently being reviewed and official accounts could ultimately differ from recollections of officers on the scene. So there are tapes of some sort. The resentment among Coral Springs officials toward Broward County officials <clears throat> about what they perceive to be a dereliction of duty. So again, Coral Springs officials, some of them, think that Broward County officials, uh, Broward County uh, officers uh, are guilty of a dereliction of duty. 
and the resentment Coral Springs officials feel towards Broward County officials um, may have reached a boiling point, says this story, at a vigil the night of February 15th, which was the day after the shooting, where in front of dozens of others, Coral Springs City Manager Mike Goodrum confronted Broward County Sheriff Scott Israel. A source familiar with the conversation tells CNN that Goodroom was upset that the Broward deputies had remained outside the school while kids inside could have been bleeding out, among other reasons. Goodroom from Coral Springs said in a statement to CNN, Given the horrific events of that day, emotions were running high, and the sheriff and I had a heated moment the following evening. Sheriff Israel and I have spoken several times since, and I can assure you that our departments have good working relationship and the utmost respect for each other. Goodroom declined to comment on the content of the conversation. Uh, let me just see if there's any... Uh, here, this is also interesting here. Two days after the shooting... Here I am, here. Two days after the shooting, Coral Springs Police Chief Tony... Uh, Pustizzi addressed some of the concerns voiced by his officers in an internal email obtained by CNN that said, among other items, this is, so this is an internal email that went out from the Coral Springs police chief, and it said, I understand that another agency, I assume that's Broward, uh, has given the impression that it had provided the majority of the rescue efforts and that the tremendous work of the Coral Springs police and fire departments has not been recognized. Please know that this issue will be addressed and the truth will come out in time. The focus for us now, however, must be on healing for ourselves, our families, our community, blah, 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 blah. So it sounds like Coral Springs authorities are upset because they think Broward County official, Broward County uh, uh, officers are, and the Broward County uh, Sheriff's Department is taking credit for the rescue operation when what the facts of the matter are is when Coral Springs police showed up, the four Broward County officers who were there still hadn't gone inside, and they didn't even go inside when the Coral Springs officers went inside. The Broward County Sheriff's Office did not return multiple requests for comment. All right, the article's almost done. I just want to finish up here, going through it. Um, we saw this before. That's from yesterday. Okay, so that's, that's, that's a story. So to sum up what we have, here's what we got. According to this CNN story, and CNN is getting this information from uh, sources, including, uh, let's see, they say sources, but also, uh, all right, so let's, I don't, they, they don't identify all their sources, but um, they're saying, and I think there's good reason to think this is reliable information. Uh, be, but anyways, who knows? But let's assume it's reliable for now. What CNN is reporting is that when the Coral Springs officers showed up at the school shooting, they found four Broward County officers, including the school officer. They were all armed, these four Broward County officers. None of them had gone into the building where the shooting was take, had taken place. I'm not sure. It's unclear whether the shooting was still going on at that time. But none of them had gone in the building. Or I guess the shooting, it's not clear from the article. But anyways, so, so, the, so the Coral Springs officers, they ended up going in to the building themselves, along with two new Broward County officers who'd shown up and one, and one officer from Sunrise, Florida. And the four original officers never went in the building. And Broward County police are reportedly upset because they feel that, uh, sorry, Coral Springs police are reportedly quite upset because they feel that Broward County has been taking credit for the rescue efforts and, their, and the efforts of the Coral Springs police have not, are not being recognized. So this is new information. And I, I got to say, I would think it w it's very possible that, that this information could be corroborated with video. There's surveillance video of the school. We know that. Uh, there are helicopters flying around there. We saw helicopter footage of that day. I would think, also I'm guessing cops were on the radio making reports. I'm pretty darn sure that if the Coral Springs police showed up and saw uh, the Broward County police outside 
the building and having not gone in yet, I'm pretty sure at least one Coral Springs police officer would have said on the radio, hey, headquarters, uh, so we just showed up here. There are these four Broward officers outside. They haven't even gone in. Like, so, and I, I'm sure, I'm guessing all that radio traffic is recorded or there's a transcript somewhere. So I'm guessing it's probably quite possible, if not probable, that, that this will be able to be corroborated. Uh, but it's the first we're hearing of it today. So quite interesting, this story. Uh, I want to get your reaction to it. Give me a shout on Twitter, at Lookner. I'm going to read your comments. What do you think about this new story today that the first four officers, armed officers at the shooting scene who were from Broward County never went inside the school? Even when other officers from Coral Springs showed up and went inside the school, they never went in. What do you think about that? Give me a shout on Twitter. I am at at Lookner, at L-O-O-K-N-E-R. Also, um, if you like our coverage, if you like that we're giving full coverage to this story, um, you can uh, get, uh, sorry, if you'd like it, please know that we are viewer supported. Your donations are what keep us on the air. So if you like right side broadcasting coverage, please consider donating by going to the bottom of the YouTube chat and click on the dollar sign at the bottom of the YouTube chat. We can only do this coverage because you keep us on the air. That's how we pay our bills. So uh, go to the bottom of the YouTube chat, click on the dollar sign, or go to rsbn.tv slash donate, rsbn.tv slash donate. All right, let's get, let's see if people have written comments in yet. I want to see what you have to say about this story. Let's see here. Um, deplorable sin cow girl says maybe they were told to stand down. Now, here's the problem with that hypothesis. The Broward County Sheriff already said yesterday, is it Scott Israel? Is that his name? Am I getting this right? Scott Israel. He already said yesterday when talking about Scott Peterson, who was, one, who was the school uh, deputy, the armed school officer, who was also worked in the Broward Sheriff's Department. The Broward Sheriff said yesterday that Scott Peterson, that deputy, should have gone in the school and should have stopped the shooter. And he, he, was, he, 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 said, um, he said that, 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 the, that, the, that Scott Peterson did the wrong thing and was supposed to go into that school. So Scott Peterson was clearly not told to stand down because the sheriff yesterday said he should have gone into the school. That was the sheriff gave a press conference about this. And I would think if, if the sheriff said that Scott Peterson was supposed to go into that school, I would think the sheriff would say the same thing about the three other armed officers there. It doesn't make much sense that Scott Peter, that, that, uh, that, that the sheriff would be criticizing Scott Peterson for not going into the school and then be like, oh, well, it's cool that those three other officers didn't go in. Now, I don't know, you know, maybe, maybe somebody got bad information somewhere, but it seems like, again, to me, if it was the responsibility of one, the school officer to go into the school, I don't see how it wouldn't be the responsibility of all of them to go into the school. And uh, so, you know, and it, it'd be weird. It's, you would think the sheriff's in charge of the operation. Maybe we'll hear there was some confusion or something, but all I know is that yesterday, that's what the sheriff said about one of those four deputies. He said he should have been in that school. It also seems odd, like somebody might say, well, maybe the three others were told to stand down and Scott Peterson wasn't, but why would that happen? And then they're all next to each other. And I don't know, it, it's, I find it unlikely that they were told to stand down, given what the sheriff has said so far. But I don't know what everybody was told. John Wood says, this is a good time to remind everyone that police officers have no legal obligation to protect you. Is it really that surprising that some of them didn't? Well, I don't know about the whole question of, of legal obligation, uh, about what kind of legal obligation police officers have. So, for example, like... Um, if a police officer, you know, well, do they have any more obligation as, as police officers as opposed to something else? Uh, uh, but I'm like my, my point is, well, these are all legal questions we could get into, but there are job requirements they have. So forget legal obligation. Um, police officers have like like people who work in other jobs have job requirements. And according to the sheriff, 
the job requirement of the school officer, and I presume the other armed officers who showed up, maybe I'm wrong, but the job requirement of the school officer was to go into that building and stop the shooter. But again, I, I can't speak to what the legal, what not legal, what the job responsibilities of all the deputies were there. But I have a hard time thinking that the, that the sheriff is really mad at and, and upset with one of the deputies for not going in, but is fine with the other three not going in. Uh, Dingle writes, and at this point, the entire Broward Sheriff Department leadership, Scott Israel himself, must do nothing less than resign. His officers must have performance files reevaluated. That's from our viewer, Dingle. Jody, a.k.a. Deplorable, says she quoted a tweet that said, or no, she says they had an agenda, politics before saving lives, money. And she quoted a tweet from a thread from The Last Refuge 2. Now, I don't know who this person is. Uh, let's see. Who is this person? Oh, The Last Refuge is a site. Yeah, they posted a, a, a 30... There's a very long Twitter thread, which I'm not going to read, first because it's long, and second of all, I don't really know... Uh, anything about this source, so I don't want to spend, you know, 20 minutes going through this Twitter thread and then being like, but I can't tell if they're reliable or not. But if you want to read it, you can go to The Last Refuge 2 on Twitter, at The Last Refuge 2. If you have comments, write to me on Twitter, at Lookner, at L-O-O-K-N-E-R. I want to hear from you guys. J Glynis Eli says, maybe they stayed out so someone could go for help. Well, where would they be going for help? I mean, wouldn't if they go for help, aren't they going to get more police? So that I'm a little confused as to why that would be the case. Jeff Kraft writes in, uh, he says, Jeff Kraft, ruins the loser president's logic of more guns in our schools being the answer. What a joke and what an idiot. My seven-year-old is smarter already. Now, someone might say in response, well, someone might say in response, actually, they, uh, you know, it doesn't uh, ruin the president's logic because, uh, as long, because the president wants people properly trained with guns. And you might argue that if this person was properly trained, uh, to uh, to the degree, to, to the point where they would respond properly in this case, then that person could have gone in and stopped the shooting earlier. I'm not taking a side on this. I'm just saying that's what someone might say in response. Uh, Re Genesis Radio writes: It begs the question, dereliction of duty. Sh they should be prosecuted and punished to the fullest extent of the law. Superiors even more so. Uh, B. Perth Watch says they were told to stand down by superiors. They are an accomplice. Now, look, uh, I, I don't know what commands these people have. All I know is that the sheriff was, was, did a press conference yesterday, a nationally broadcast press conference, in which he criticized the, one of the officers for not going in. So that says to me... I don't think the sheriff would do that if, if the officer was told to stand down. But if they, they were told to stand down, then somebody's lying. Now, in terms of, though, in terms of whether officers can be prosecuted for not going in the building, you know, we talked about this yesterday, and I was saying on the air, I'm not sure what they'd be prosecuted for, what law would they be breaking. And somebody brought up the idea of criminal negligence, and that's, I don't know enough about criminal negligence to really know if that would apply here. Um, you know, let me just real quick, like, talk about that for a second. Hang on a second. I want to make sure I'm not getting live video, uh, uh, video playing here. Here's a site that says study.com. says crim criminal negligence. Someone commits criminal negligence when that person is careless with his or her actions to the extent that he or she pays, she pays no regards to other people's rights and safety. 
So for the example they give is, uh, uh, in, his, in this example, Jeremy knew he shouldn't be shooting a gun in his yard and he was intentionally breaking the law. Was he acting? Oh, well, that's not a good one. Uh, they're, 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 this is like a discussion one. I want one which is just like, Criminal negligence can occur when an individual drives his or her vehicle in a distractive or harmful manner that results in a crash, self-inflicted injuries. I feel like there's like a more, a better example of criminal negligence out there. What is criminal negligence? Criminal negligence in real life. Emily has an eight-month-old daughter named Taylor. Hank moves in with Emily. Taylor and Taylor's siblings in their California home. One day, Hank offers to care for Taylor while Emily goes to work. When Emily returns, Taylor is screaming and seriously burned on her bottom and side. Hank says that he gave her a bath, but the water got too hot. Uh, what is? It? Can't somebody just give me a simple explanation of criminal, example of criminal negligence? Ugh. So, so much for my attempt to get you a simple explanation of criminal negligence. But um, what I was wondering, though, is would criminal negligence maybe not apply to cops going into a building? Because couldn't the cops say, like, look, I heard this person shooting in there and I got really scared. So I wasn't just negligent. I was, I was, I, I you know, and also, you know, like, uh, so I don't know if that affects things at all. And also there's no guarantee that if the cops went in, uh, they like, like I wonder is criminal negligence. Like if I have like a pool in my backyard, uh, and I don't put a fence around it and I know there's like kids who live next door and the kids walk in and then drown in my pool. Is that criminal negligence? Um, because I just didn't do some basic thing I shouldn't have done. Or maybe if like I operate a school and there's a big hole uh, that there's, they're, they're working on at the school, and I, as the school, neglect to put a fence around the hole, then I didn't, I didn't murder, and a kid falls in the hole and dies, I didn't murder the kid, but at the same time, we were negligent because we didn't take some basic care to, uh, to, set, to put a fence around the hole. So that could, that could be a case of criminal negligence, I guess. Uh, but I don't know all about criminal negligence. But what I'm saying is it's not clear to me that criminal negligence would apply to officers not going into a school because they were afraid or something like that. So I don't know if these officers who didn't go in the school, if there's any law they broke. Uh, now, they could, I'm guessing, possibly be subject to civil suits uh, uh, for damages, but that's civil law, and that's not that's not that's not breaking criminal criminal law. That's just they could be sued for something or other by by in a civil suit, but not uh, not a not a not, not breaking criminal law. That's just again these are I I need a lawyer I can ask about these things. But a number of people have been asking about uh, talking sending comments in about the police officers getting prosecuted, and 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 I have not yet heard a good case for what law they could have broken if the, if the, if all they did was just not go in. Doing your job, breaking the, not doing your job like you're supposed to do isn't breaking the law in and of itself. Lord Nivis writes, and I think everyone is willing to increase taxes enough to pay for four officers to be stationed at each school. I don't know about Lord Nivis. That could be a lot of money. I don't know. Uh... And I don't, you know, look, obviously, I think it's a good thing in the world in which we had infinite amounts of wealth. I'm guessing it would be great. It would be, I don't want to have a problem with hiring uh, co four cops at every school. But the question is, is always not just how much it costs, but it's like, how is the money best used? You know, four cops at every school, school if you multiply that out, you know, how many public schools are there? How many public schools in the U.S.? So there are 90,000 elementary schools. So just take the elementary schools. 90,000 elementary schools, four times 90,000 would be 360,000. And if you pay them each, you know, 20,000 a year or 30,000 a year, you're getting into like billions of dollars. 
And then you wonder, like, well, is it worth the billions for that instead of spending it on something else? These are the questions you have to ask. Obi-Wan Kafefe says, the cowards who didn't go in is really pissing me off. Joe Trano says he can't be charged with criminal negligence. Maybe that's true. I'd like to know why, though. But I would have to have a much better understanding of what Craig criminal negligence is and why he can't be charged in this case. Rick Wilmarth says officers may have thought, why risk our lives when we can blame the NRA? How would they be blaming the NRA, Rick? Please feel free to explain and clarify. Uh, City Girl 2 says, about time this story is being told. Uh, Stand with Trump says the last refuge to is Conservative Treehouse. Oh, the website Conservative Treehouse, that's their, uh, that's their Twitter handle? I'm not sure. Aaron Cathcart writes, Steve, I graduated from the best police academy in Colorado. Day one, you are not out there to protect anyone. You are there to go home safe every day. That's what they taught us. True story. Peace and stay safe. Uh, I don't doubt that they taught you that at their academy. Uh, all I know is that in Broward, the sheriff said yesterday that the uh, he, when he was talking about that one deputy who, who was the school officer, he said that officer should have gone in and should have uh, engaged the shooter and should not have stayed outside. Chris Yates says there was a Supreme Court decision about this. They can't be charged. I will find it. Oh, uh, here somebody sent me an article here. Uh, Jason Clement sent me an article. John Wood says Warren versus D.C. And then, hang on. Let me get Jason Clement's message link up here. So this is Jason Clement sent me this New York Times. Justices rule police do not have a constitutional duty to protect someone. The Supreme Court ruled on Monday, this is from 2005, that the police do not have a constitutional duty to protect a person from harm, even a woman who had obtained a court protective order. What is this case specifically, though? The problem here is, though, look, I, I gotta, I'd have to read through this, but it's possible that this court rulings are about specific situations. So it's very possible that the specific situation this case was about is importantly different from the police case. So I know the headline says justices rule police do not have a constitutional duty to protect someone. But often when uh, journalism gets done about court cases, they make these grand sweeping statements uh, which don't actually deal with the specific legal questions in the decision. So I'm not I'm not I'm not going to confidently confidently sit in here and say that this case uh, settles the police case uh, in generally. Uh, these court cases are quite complex and deal with very specific issues which might not carry over to a situation you think is similar. So I'd have to, you know, again, and some people are sending me links saying this shows whether the police are required to protect you. But but that's that's it's uh, the all of these court cases are about specific legal issues and to really know for sure whether they would apply to the police case. You would have to understand the very specific legal issues dealt with in the court case.
Um, Tom O'Neill made a donation. Thank you, Tom. Tom says, Steve, thanks, Steve. Great coverage. The armed guard Scott Peterson, 54 years old, worked for Parkland Mar Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School since 2009 and was paid $75,600 per year. Just the facts, ma'am. RSBN rocks. Thank you, uh, Tom O'Neill. And he had been, I know he'd been working with the Sheriff's Department since 1985. We read that yesterday. But thank you, Tom. We are viewer supported. So your donations are what keep us on the air. Joe Trano writes, you have a brave coach that risked and lost his life protecting the children and he didn't have a weapon, yet you had a deputy armed at the ready and did absolutely nothing. And I want to say something I said yesterday on, on the broadcast. Look, look, if I was in that situation, I could see myself just being so scared that somebody had a gun and like running away or something. So I certainly am not going to sit here and say it's easy for somebody, an officer, to go into a building where a shooter is. What I said yesterday, though, and I'll repeat today, is the point, part of the job the officer is supposed to do when you hire that school officer is to go in and engage a school shooter. So if so, when you hire that officer, you need to make sure that the person you hire is capable and willing of doing that. And somebody should only be taking that job if they're sure that they're cool with going into that situation. So I by no means I'm going to sit up here and say, Oh, it should be easy to go into a school building where somebody's shooting. You know, of course I could see it not being easy. But at the same time, you know, if you're going to have a school officer whose job it is to confront the shooter, then that person taking that job should only take it if they're very, very confident they're a cool doing that. And the person doing the hiring or people doing the hiring should have some kind of uh, process that ascertains to a great degree that the person they're hiring is willing to do that and will do that when the time comes. Rick Wilmarth says, the media will not cover the negligent officers as harsh as the NRA who was not at fault. It is an interesting point you're making, Rick, you know, that there has been a lot of negative coverage, obviously, of the NRA. Uh, and uh, I haven't seen, I mean, this gets covered somewhat. There wasn't, there, there wasn't that much coverage of the whole story yesterday with, that, with the official who didn't, with the uh, school officer who never went in the building. And I'll say this. Look, you know, this, these stories about, this, about the officers not going in the building are coming out eight and nine days after the shooting. If they came out the same day, it'd probably be a bigger story. Why didn't it come out earlier? As I said yesterday, I'm very confused because you'd think if there's surveillance footage, they would have known, I would guess, the same day that their officers hadn't gone into the building. So why hasn't this information come out? Why did it take until yesterday to come, start coming out? You know, I'll let you be the judge of that. And then a couple days ago, two days ago in the New York Times, this Broward sheriff was quoted as saying, uh, as best as I know, all of our uh, deputies followed protocol. And then one day later, he's saying, oh, well, surveillance video showed one of them didn't follow protocol and never went inside. So it took him eight days to watch that video. I mean, that seems strange to me. Uh, Edie Marie Trump says, are Emma for Change and David Hogg, who I think are both students at the high school, I think, I'm not sure. Hang on a second. One easy way to find out. Yeah, these are both students at the uh, high school where the shooting was. Uh, Edie Marie Trump says, are Emma for Change and David Hogg 111 going to lead a march for our lives in front of the Broward County Sheriff's Office led by liar Scott Israel, or are they just going to keep harassing innocent Americans standing up for their 2A rights, Second Amendment rights? Nice job, parents, that spawned these two. Uh, I will say, Edie Marie, Edie Marie Trump, uh, you know, this, I, a lot of students are, are angry, both at that school and at other schools across the country. And I, I do think, uh, you know, 
it, it, given the stories that come out, at least some of their anger probably should be directed at the sheriff's department if they're upset about the causes of this shooting. Or causes of the shooting being as bad as it was. JC, one of our moderators, says, Steve, even mall cops don't run away. Something is definitely strange here, and I agree with the chatters. One cop maybe, but four? Hmm. Thanks again, Steve. Great job. Thank you, JC. And thank you to all our moderators. Jan and uh, JC are there right now moderating the chat. And Webster and Common Sense and Glenno are on the website. Yeah, I, I, don't, I mean, I don't, I don't know what the deal is. It, it's, it's, the whole thing is very strange to me. I, I don't really understand it. Apparently, the Coral Springs police don't really understand it either. They're upset about this. All right, we're going to wrap up the stream in a couple minutes. So if you have any more comments, last call for comments, write to me at, at Luckner on Twitter, at Luckner. Um, I'll post on my Twitter if I hear any more news about this. So, um, so, so you can follow me on Twitter. I post about breaking news all the time. Also, be sure to subscribe to Right Side Broadcasting on YouTube. Click the notifications bell, even though today YouTube never sent out notifications about our broadcast today. All day. Never send, out, never send out notifications. Oh, Greg sent me a couple messages. Greg Jackson writes in, it would be completely different if it were a case of a hostage situation. I'll be blunt here. In so very many cases, we hear the officer say without hesitation that they fear for their lives. Are they too trained to be in fear of their lives? Sure is beginning to sound like that. Greg also says, what is qualified immunity for police officers? As outlined by the Supreme Court in Harlow versus Fitzgerald, qualified immunity is designed to shield government officials from actions insofar as their conduct does not violate clearly established statutory or constitutional rights of which a reasonable person would a reasonable person would have been known would have known. I, I again, these legal issues are very complex, and whether one case replies to, applies to a different case, whether one case applies to a certain example in real life is a very complex question. So. I won't pretend to understand this stuff. And you really have to have a good understanding of these specific cases and the legal reasoning in them to know for sure whether they apply to other real-life cases. Uh, Greg Jackson also says the sheriff didn't come out about Peterson until after the CNN town hall where the sheriff openly count out, count, called out the NRA and the taking away of guns and attacking Dana Lesh. Suspicious? So a number of people out there think uh, that the sheriff might have known about the uh, Scott Peterson, maybe about the four, maybe about all four officers who didn't go in the building, but didn't come out with it until after the CNN town hall. At least some people out there think that. Hey, we got a donation from Christine Bestgen. She says, I wonder how Debbie Washerman Schultz is involved. Thank you, Christine, for the donation. If you want to help Right Side Broadcasting be on the air, your donations keep us on the air. So uh, you can donate by going to the bottom of the YouTube chat or click on the, uh, or sorry, and click on the dollar sign at the bottom of the YouTube chat or go to rsbn.tv slash donate, rsbn.tv slash donate. Let me just check out the Facebook chat room and see what's going on there. Sorry, I just have to open up, open up the video here. There's an argument in the chat room going on as to whether the NRA is, rash, is, res, is responsible for the shooting. A spirited argument there. Well, anyways, thank you to the people who are participating in, our, in the argument in the chat room on Facebook. Some of you are Terrence Roselle, Sherry Skusen, Don Heim, Bo Ramalot, Jerome Smigelski, and everybody else there at the, uh, on the Facebook chat. Thank you for watching and chatting there. And... 
Royal Kitty says, just long shot. Can the police be charged with a conspiracy since they didn't go in to help the kids? Can they charge them with helping the shooter? I think for a conspiracy, they would have to be something where like the police talk to the shooter before the incident and plan this all. Otherwise, that, that, that they couldn't be charged with that. Release the memo says you should check out the ALICE program. They do active shooter drills with schools, hospitals, and many other facilities. All right, I think we're going to wrap up this stream. Uh, but, uh, but, but thank you, everybody, for, um, who joined us for this stream and also for sending in all your comments and all your news links and all your links to the court cases and everything. I very much appreciate it. Uh, thank you to the donors, people who donated, help us keep on the air, help keep us on the air. Um, uh, thank you to everybody. Uh, the moderators, great job, moderators, as usual. We really appreciate it. And everybody in our chat rooms on the website, on Facebook, on YouTube, for chatting and discussing this. We love when you participate. It looks like there was a spirited discussion going on in the YouTube chat room, too. Thank you, Claudia, for saying thanks. Thank you, JC. Thank you, Jan, for moderating as well. And Webster, thank you, Light Switch and White Space Marines. And History B and DM. And uh, Philadelphia Eagles, thank you. Scuffy McGee says, good stream. Thank you, Scuffy. And morning, evening, day, thank you. Thank you, Liz Bellin, on Facebook, too. Appreciate it. Thanks, Sheard Wheel. Thanks, Carol Gillig. Martin Marble says, meet me at the Waffle House. Thank you, Kirk Larson. Thanks, Wally. All right, we're wrapping it up. Um, if there is breaking news later, we will be on the air covering it. So keep an eye out. Uh, in addition to subscribing to us on YouTube, you can also follow us on Facebook, Right Side Broadcasting, on Twitter, at RSB Network. I am on Twitter, at, at Lookner. I post about breaking news a lot, so follow me there. All right, thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks, for everybody, for participating in the discussions. We love when you discuss stuff with, uh, with, us, with us and with each other in the chat room. So, um, so thank you for participating in the broadcast. That's it for now. We'll see you later. Have a good night, everybody, and we'll see you soon with more news here at Right Side Broadcasting.